Hi, Tony. Hello. If I'm getting into a relationship, I would want to marry that person. Okay. I'm not going to waste my time and just to see whether it works or not. And situationship is the most disgusting Discuss. concept that I've ever oh come my through in my life. Oh my god. As kids, we all have like a dream. Mm. I always wanted to be a cricket player. Like, ah, I always nah. wanted to be something like, so <laughs> what was that for you? I always wanted to be a... I know I love God and I know it's always in my mind and my heart. But you don't have well. to go to a temple or sit for puja to show yeah, him that. Yeah, exactly. So I don't have to go to po- uh, temple or like sit in the mandir and do any kind of ritual, but it's just in my head. And I know if I'm in a very bad phase in my life, it's only one thing that can absolutely solve all my problems is just sit and remember him. when you talk about the money hitting a bank account every month uh-huh. what's that number around oh. <laughs> you can give us a ballpark i think i can take two it's been 4 years chandni like do you yeah. still miss your dad i will give love and a lot of things just because i feel you need love in your life Welcome back to yet another episode of Unset Feeling with Shanky. And before we move ahead, I really want you to go ahead and subscribe to this YouTube channel because there are 80% of people who come watch the content but do not follow us. So, your one subscription will help us to create better content and get better guests on our podcast. So, today's guest is Chandni, a lifestyle and a fashion creator. Let's deep dive into her life and understand what is her take on love. life relationships and spirituality Hi Chandni hello how are you good how are you great so before we move forward uh, we want to know what's your back story Chandni like how did you start this journey of content creation and how has it been so far amazing till now yet i started this 4 to 5 years back very time pass i had no intentions <laughs> of being something content creation has the concept has come recently yes pehle aise kuch bhi nahi tha pehle tha video banana bas yeah it was just like you want to just get ready and like just be there on cam in front of the camera but i started because i was not interested in studies at all i was really good at it but i was never interested so i never figured that what i want to want do to in do. terms of career wise um and then i just started with photos self portrait and then making videos and then real concept came out came into picture, and yeah. then everybody was just going gaga all over it like <laughs> making videos and then it was locked down had so much time and then i stopped in middle and i started again and then i started gaining a lot of followers which was nuts for me i was like what is this happening i don't know what am i supposed to do with so many people commenting on one video <laughs> but then it was quite fascinating to me i was enjoying that initial period and then the concept of agencies and like coming, people yeah. coming together and they want to like um give you a lot of work and to promote stuff and all that and then slowly slowly i understood the concept of content creation and then i was like i can do this for a while let's see and then it turned into like a whole 24/7 business yeah and like i i like it's a business there's a lot of money i love it how you mentioned it's a business <laughs> no it's a business <laughs> I mean it's a business that I like doing it and I also enjoy doing it. So yeah. I mean I like it but I would like to do something else also. I haven't figured out what yet but something in business for sure. But, but for now it's it's the content creation. So you mean to say like content creation is something that you would not want to continue? No 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 I would love to continue but I would also love to have something different other than content creation because mm. I think my entire life since i started content creation has always been about creating, creating videos and like doing some of the other thing but i think now i want something different experience like something in business or maybe something in totally far away from content creation and making videos and creating something it's just for experience again so, so i think you have uh, something in your head yes i would like to go in a bit of wholesale market like a very boring job Amazing. Okay, yeah. <laughs> tell me more about it. So my dad uh, had a groceries uh, <laughs> shop in Bandra, 
and I've always been around groceries and like wholesale and like all these things. So I think I would love to start something like a store, like a like a demart, like a small demart thingy. Amazing. And like go into that business for a bit. And then just make money from out of that also and just give it to people to take care. <laughs> Amazing. Are you going to give your own touch to that business? I don't know. I would like to keep it boring. I would like to keep it as a normal grocery store. My God. Nothing personal touch. It's just, just a grocery store. I, You know, it's you know it, trust thing. me, like every creator I've met and anyone like who I speak to, yeah. I have never heard this side. <laughs> I know. Like no one comes to a podcast and say, <laughs> I, I want to start business. a grocery store. I know, yeah. But... Why that? Like, because just because your family has been there and you have been a part of that since childhood. No, I childhood. think it's a very, it's a tricky business, of course. But I think it's very simple as well. It doesn't have a lot of tantrums that you want, you want to take care of this, mm. this, that production, like how, you know, content creation is. Yes. It's not that. I would like to keep it simple and wow. a bit of like low key. Amazing. Just that, yeah. Crazy that is. So when you started with, initially you mentioned like you started with the content creation and mm -hmm. you couldn't, take like there's so many people commenting following you watching your videos yeah. how was that experience for you for a bit it was very nice very validating and like amazing you love when people actually comment on stuff that you're actually creating yeah. uh, after a while it didn't matter because it was too much and then it also started affecting at some point but i think i think as in since starting i i already knew how to cope up with it Right. Since the starting, when I started content creation, I never used to like get affected by trolls. It was just in me. I was oh, like, shit. okay, like, I don't care. Since starting, then slowly, 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 things got worse in terms of like trolling and like all of that things. Still, I think I've learned a lot how to cope up with it. Because I don't think so. I use my phone a lot in terms of like, I don't check my comment section. You don't check your comments. I don't check anything. I don't check like my likes, views comment section who is commenting what i really don't know you just create basically. i just create post it and then done i go back to watching modern family so it's like right. that's my thing i create content i post and then i don't use my phone so when you when when you started content creation like did you ever imagine like you want to create content or you want to be a content creator did you oh imagine that God, never never ever so initially like we as kids we all have like a dream hmm. like i always wanted to be a cricketer or like, ah, I always nice. wanted to be something like, so <laughs> what was that for you? Um, I always wanted to be a pilot Ooh. for some reason. A pilot or a cabin crew, but something related to flying. Flight. It was very important to me because uh, from my family, nobody has traveled from um, through plane or flight. So it was very fascinating to us to like see flights and like people who used to travel by flights. And then I was like, you know what, if I become a pilot, or a cabin crew, I'll fly every day, all day. Oh so it was the, it's just a kid imagination. Uh, but I still don't know, it was like when I was six or seven, I started content creation when I was 12 or 13. What do you mean? Yeah, so it was like, it was like, it was just a thing that I started. I, I had a lot of fun. I always liked getting ready and like putting on lipstick yes, and like yes, blush yes. and like in front of the camera and all that. But I never thought about it. Like as a career or a but, pastor. But you life. always had that in you. Like yeah. You always. And I, if I look look at my pictures back then, you'll always see me like posing like. Nice. <laughs> so it was always there, but never thought about it as a career. But you never did a nine to five job? Never. Never? never. Like nothing? An never. internship or something? Never. That is great. Yeah. So now when you're doing content creation, yeah. say, I can say that something that you really love. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. So how... Is it now because you are doing something that you really love and there are a lot of people out there doing a nine to five job. Hmm. Okay, maybe like 80% of them I know, they do not love doing a nine to five job, but they're okay. still stuck there. Uh -huh. Okay, I think maybe a lot of your friends and there are a lot of friends in my community, they don't like that. Hmm. So how do you differentiate that? Like, how is it for you now? Like Honestly, keeping that in mind. I think... 9 to 5 is the best job, I, I feel personally, because it's very stable. Secondly, you know your routine. And hating 9 to 5 job, I think it has just become a thing because people started saying that, oh, we hate 9 mm. to 5 job because 
you have to be in the office all this hours and like do something that your boss says or something but i think 9 to 5 job is it's amazing you know what you're doing and you know your schedule you have your sundays and like few holidays to like enjoy and i don't know i think 9 to 5 job is amazing if i had a chance to do 9 to 5 job i'll do it so, happily but why didn't you do it like if because i think so i was doing content creation throughout my school time okay then i skipped my schooling after 10th and i didn't do college okay so it was like i was already by the time i skipped my school i was already at the stage where i was earning money so i Great. never thought about it because i i wasn't focusing on my studies because of content creation and second i was never interested so i was like i will not do college and i will just skip my school and just continue doing this as a job as a job yeah so w- content creation i'm sure like as a content creator we all have bad days so has there been a moment Absolutely. or a period where you felt bad you f- felt low and you were still creating content every day <laughs> <laughs> no kidding uh, of course yeah there there are phases it's a very bad phases i think for me a very common phase is that i just start comparing myself with with people. someone else yeah with people in with what people way? that i have never met in my entire life but like just looking at them on social media oh shit and i think uh it was long back and then now i've tried like i have learned how to cope up with it but other than that i think that is the most common phase i go through because i i because i have been doing this since very long and i have taken so many breaks that i am very self aware that i can see there is no growth you know in a lot of ways okay so then when i see a person doing it who just started few years back and having so much growth i feel like i start blaming myself like i don't know like am i doing something wrong or like this that but i also know that that person is working a lot and i'm not so obviously there is going to be a difference in the growth and what people are achieving but i think that's a very common phase i go through because i'm a very i'm not very um decisive person when it comes to taking decisions like i need a lot of time to think about it and go into deep and like actually see if it's affecting me or it's just in my head in because head. i saw it on social media so it's like it takes a lot of overthinking and a lot of time Shit. and it it drains me a lot so i think that's a very common phase that i go through but now that i've i i know that i'm very self aware about everything in my life that i'm doing nice. and i know that i'm not doing good i know it so i don't know so when the other person says it to me i don't feel hurt because i already know it i have already made a imagination but why do you say you're not doing good chan like as far as i know you like yeah. you've been doing really well and looking at your numbers or anything it's like really good and so why do you say that you're not doing good because i think i have a very different image of success and achievements in my head not that i want to want do i want to do this brand or i want to do that mm. brand it's not that i have a very different imagination of success what is success and to you for me it's just providing enough for people that i love it's just that i don't want a diamond bracelet or anything oh i would love to have that but in general it's like i don't want so much but i i just want enough but that's the thing right you don't know what's enough <laughs> so that's where the line comes but i think success for me is just being at peace and i think i haven't found that yet so it's just like if i'm sitting somewhere just normally i just don't want to think about things that affects me i want to think about things that it's nice that i did that i did this it's it's amazing for myself it's amazing for my family friends my dog this that so i think i haven't found that yet but i think um it's also a procedure it's also a journey so, so i've just left it to the god so but have you thought about something like as you mentioned maybe starting a grocery business is mm-hmm. your calling yeah. is that your piece that you're talking about maybe. sitting at a grocery <laughs> store surrounded with fruits and vegetables might be yes i don't know but i think that will bring a lot of different chani altogether because business is something i don't think so everybody can handle for sure right for sure and as a marwadi i think it's in build it's in yeah, build like you, know, you just want to like even if you're doing something absolutely not related to business you somehow just go into business so i think i've always i always liked business in general 
and I, your your parents are supportive with everything that you're doing and now they are initially they, they were not yeah no in what way in a lot of ways um i i because it's a marwadi family mm. it's very difficult i think it's insanely difficult because it's not just you and your sisters it's not your you and your mother father but it's a whole relative behind you masa masi this that so you have to think about everyone because you have been brought up like that to think about everyone but i was very stubborn i never gave like i never i don't you know. stubborn i don't think so i am i'm very stubborn i'm very selfish in terms of in a lot of ways um i th- if i think if if i think this is good for me and the other person says that no it's it's going to be it's going to be a terrible result but i'll still do it you'll still do it so it's like i don't care You're if right. i want something and if i want to do something i'll do it so that was me since the start and then my parents were like no don't do it you ha- you're like good at studies do something but i was like no 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 i'll do this wow. only and i i kept going and then after when they saw money that's when they were like okay fine do it so it was like now they are fine with it now they are like they give me ideas about a lot of stuff oh amazing yeah but initially it was too hard for me to do a lot of things i think if my parents were supportive a bit I would have done a lot of things earlier earlier in life yeah. like what you're doing right now maybe yeah. they would have supported you you would have started earlier earlier yeah 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 but do you re- sure. do you regret that no i don't you know no it's a, it's a part i don't regret anything that i've gone through in my life i think that has built the best of chani that i am now and i think it's again it's a procedure after a year or right. two it's again a different chani through a lot of challenges I don't regret anything. So your parents are happy seeing yeah, those yeah. amount getting credited to your bank account yeah. every month. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, yes. Okay, so you can try not to say this. Okay, okay. if you choose to say it, you can. Yeah. Okay. Uh what's that when you talk about the money hitting your bank account every month? What's uh-huh. that number around? Oh. <laughs> you can give us a ballpark. Um I think I can take two coach bag in a month <laughs> not that i own one but i i can yeah oh meaning that's a good number that's a good number so yeah after seeing those two bags in your wardrobe every month <laughs> your parents are like beti kar le ja yeah yeah, yeah. Yes, absolutely see every, every parent does like that once they start seeing money and it's fine so when we talk about money mm. okay now i also want to know about your love life Uh-huh. relationships hmm. how has it been chani like how has been your love life so far i i i don't know i think my last relationship was almost 3 years or 4 years back and i have not dated after that and um, for me love life is very different i don't know my relationship criteria is not tall and all this it's very different it's what like what is it explain us it's so you know when you meet someone and you know the person is attractive and there is a slight of bonding and everything uh you tend to say something that is quite vulnerable to you and i think i've seen a lot of people around me doing that it is called trauma bonding it's like if me and the other person are talking and you bond over something that is very vulnerable to the other person that you have gone through he feels pity he will feel that oh my god he or she will feel that they went to through a lot of things right in their life and uh, it's a bit of soft space that you create for the other person and then you talk then you hold each other in the bad times and all that and then you get into relationship i don't think so um that kind of relationship is what i want which is very common nowadays, nowadays. in this generation trauma bonding what you went through in your life i get it etc etc in my head it's very different i think for me it's like if i meet a person i meet a person as a stranger as a very normal person i will never create a imagination in my head that oh my god he's a very attractive guy so like i will i would want to do something and see if where this goes where this goes because i've already decided that i want something so i will always say or do things that will surround near relationships and situationships or seeing someone and building a lot of expectations and building other. a lot of expectations exactly so i think i'm i 
I'm single because <clears throat> I'm I'm very much selective about a lot of things. Like um, if I meet someone, then I will I would definitely not want it want to see someone because if I'm getting know, into a relationship, I, I would want to marry that person. I get it. I'm not gonna waste my time and just to see whether it works or not. And situationship is the most disgusting, disgusting. concept that I've ever oh come my through in my life. God. So it's like if I'm dating someone, it is to marry. Hmm. Now, marry is a futuristic thing. Yeah, but like but at least yes. something that has meaning in I sh- in I your shall. life. It doesn't have to be like you start with those lines. Okay, I want to start dating him because yeah. you want to get married. Later, whatever happens, that is that is future. Future. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, I would always, I would if I go into a relationship, it was always be with the intention of marrying someone, and not just casual. A relationship here and there. So, h- how many relationships have you been in so far? I've only dated twice in my entire lifetime. One was school time. <laughs> I don't count that, but still, and only one relationship that was good for the, for a very long period. How of long time. was that? That was almost two and a half years relationship, okay. and then we broke up. Yeah, got it. So, Chandni, like anyone who is listening to this podcast, okay. Mm. If you've been in like say two relationships, counting the one you've been in like when you were in school, right? What have you learned? Like three things that you've learned from your relationships so far. Uh, never change your um, opinion or emotion on basis of how the other person will feel. It's like. If the other person is vulnerable, is hurt, or any kind of that, you have to say what you actually feel, and not something that he wants to hear. Not just something to make him feel better for a moment, but something that you actually feel, and not just manipulate the whole decision because that person is crying or that person is feeling something else, and he wants to hear or she wants to hear something totally different than what you have to say. I get what you think. Right? So it's like. Never make that decision because it becomes a habit. Right. It becomes a habit because you know every other time when some some situation comes up of you fight, you gonna manipulate your own opinion about a lot of stuff, and then you get confused. You confuse the situation. You confuse the person, and then you confuse your whole relationship. So I think you have to just be very blunt and, and very, not fake it basically. You. And not fake it. Just say whatever you're feeling. Just say that this is what I feel. If you still want to cry, then that's up to that person. You can take your space and talk it out. Second thing I would say, um, I think conversation. Like talk it out. It's very important. Conversation in general, like n- not just like when you ha- when you fight, then only conversation, but in general, talk about anything. You mean to say like you need to have enough. Topics to talk on, or enough things to talk on when you are sitting together, or like yeah, I mean, not just about what your relationship is about, but like in general conversation, like about something intel- intelligent. Something, I get it. I know what you're saying. Advice, yes. you know, not just what your friend did, not what your this yes. that that that. Yes. It's very yes. boring after a while. Yes. But a normal conversation where you could just open yourself, like as a friend, open right. up as a friend. As a person that your girlfriend or your boyfriend won't be offended, it's like that conversation is very important. And third the thing, third one. it's been a while that I've been in relationship. I'm actually forgetting. Um, third thing will be, I guess, never give your um, chabi to them. <laughs> <laughs> no, never give a happiness power like a happiness key. Yes, exactly. The chavi to them to chavi make to, you feel however yeah. you want. They want you to. But it's also very. It's a, it's a very mixed up. Like it's a very tricky thing to say. But then it's like, I will be happy even if you're sad. I, that came out very wrong. But in general, <laughs> it's like I don't want to be happy just because you are happy. I know. You know, I can be happy anytime I want, or you can be happy when I'm sad. It's it has to it's be like that. It's basically also I think uh, to break it down like. Being independent, even when you're in a relationship, yeah, with that in a lot of ways, yeah, yeah, like yeah. not just financially uh-huh. but emotionally as well. That 
because i'm having a bad day hmm. you should not start feeling bad, bad because i'm having a bad day exactly that's my thing huh. that's my own space yeah. and you if you want to feel good about because you are having a good day you can still feel good about it right i understand that right. yeah that's very important that's absolutely important because yeah. i think in today's relationships hmm. and situationships or whatever ships we are in right now i think it is about if you are sad i have to feel sad to make you feel better better yeah and you yeah. don't want you know no absolutely not and are you saying all of these things like the three points that you mentioned is it coming from something that maybe you've gone through yeah you've absolutely faced? my last relationship is this these are the three things that i've learned like it's absolutely important for because as, as initially i said when you make a habit a certain habit xyz whatever that is it will affect you only mm. because that person is already very much adapted to the nature now you are always you know lowering yourself not actually making decisions what you want to not actually saying something that you want to it's affecting you and it's affecting your side of relationship right and you are annoyed half of the time so you say something that you are not supposed to say right and then the whole relationship Relation. just goes off so i think there are the three things that i've learned from my last relationship and there are in, even in friendships i think it's very important yes yes, yes. To, the same things that you mentioned yeah like to make very good point about your boundaries where you come and what is the end of of a certain thing even in friendship it's very important and are you an emotional person chandni like absolutely how emotional like when you talk of emotions what do you mean by your emotion i think I don't know if it's a good habit or a bad habit but for example if I'm listening to somebody else if I'm just talking to somebody else I try to put myself on the other side of the story mm. and I just imagine how and what the person went My through boy. and that's also not very a good habit because there you're supposed to not uh be a emotional person and just be a person who listens to that or uh, the other one but i think i'm very empathetic in a lot of way that i just try and imagine that what that person went through and it affects me a lot sure. because then it's like it's insane amount of emotions and situations and then i start to treat the other person with more care and with more love and affection right and just because i feel like how much love that person needs right now what just because what they went through i think the point that you're mentioning now is the same one of those points that you mentioned initially like you don't want to be in this situation yeah right like where do you think sometimes when you are in this situation people take advantage of you because absolutely say i know you you are a person who is very emotional and you are someone who tries to get into my shoes and understand and feel the way i am feeling today so if i know that about you maybe there's something that i have done wrong Yeah. But I will come down to this point where I make you feel more vulnerable, make you feel bad about things that I'm feeling that way. Hmm. That you are coming into my shoes and sure. again yeah, yeah, yeah. have people taken an advantage. Do you think people have taken an advantage because you are emotional in this way? Not for a particular emotional thing, but I think I have I draw a very thin line between taking advantage and understanding. I understand a person is taking advantage or wanting to do something very spiteful i'll just somehow understand that it's just the vibe mm. i get from the person and i all so it's all with me or it's always that even if i'm very close to a person there is a certain kind of self awareness that there is there has to be some if the other person is hurting me some or the other way i'll just back myself a second before that because i've already have imagined everything So you mean to say before they take that decision, you are already a I'm step already, ahead. Yeah, I, I've already stepped back because it's like I know um, the, my emotional side has a very neg- uh, disadvantage side when it comes to people, and therefore I am very much prepared that I have to step back and I have to make myself in a way where even if I'm showcasing something very vulnerable side of me, there should not be any backlash. right so like i'm very secure that way 
I won't let anyone come near me and affect my mental peace and my area where I'm affecting myself. So I think I'm very much secure in that way. Do you think being over secure, like right now, you're very much aware of your yeah. things, like the surroundings, mm. does it affect you? No. I think being a very secure, it's just that you don't let a lot of people come near you at a certain next. So you know when sometimes even you want that you're just vulnerable and you don't have to think what the other person might do with that kind of information because nowadays i feel like uh, when a person is opening themselves they are, they're still in back in the head it's like what if something goes right. wrong what right. if that right. person right. does this or what if that other person does that so it's like being self awareness is the best but again there's a second side of every human being that you just want to not think about twice before opening your vulnerable side in front of someone uh that is one of the things that i don't let there are not so many people in my life that are very close to me that are like only one or two that and I you choose on. that basically and i choose that absolutely i choose that so that's one of the things that you don't have a lot of people around you uh to take care and to like give you love and affection so in the last 3 years you mentioned it's been almost 3 years you've dated someone yeah 2 years 3 years Single, yeah yeah right yeah. so in this past 2 years or 3 years huh. has there been a moment where there was someone who was trying to get really close to you mm. or in a good way like really know you better mm. but because you are so self secured huh. and you have your guards up all the time right hasn't it affected that relationship where you thought later okay maybe if i would have gotten my guards down mm. we could have gone a little far or it could have turned into something beautiful first of all it's very hard to find that kind of person <laughs> but <laughs> but i yeah i've met few people and um, and yeah i think that uh, that affects a lot of thing it does it does but again it comes in front of a people that i know it's not going to work out with um it's just the feeling you get right it's not like oh my god i met a person and i know it's going to work out like the yeah. vibe are like but you won't perfect. get to know anyways like even when you're meeting someone for the first time you won't get to know if on the first meet that okay it is going to work out or not yeah 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 absolutely but again it's you get that connection okay right I you get it. The, it when you, you like someone it goes both the sides you talk you see each other there is this honeymoon initial period going on where you love bomb each other and everything yes, right yes, that's yes. a very sweet very nice but i think that is the main reason that the first stage is the last stage with that person and when it comes to me love bombing is something that is insane concept to me because yes. love bombing is like you are initially gave so much attention And, and so much retract. and everything and once you come into your natural habitat a person is flipped the other person is like oh my god Shit. what happened like this guy was this girl or this guy was like love bombing me initially with so much attention 24/7 was coming and picking up and like dropping dinner wine party this that everything is happening and then suddenly after 3 months he's just making two calls in a day oh shit so it's like when a person comes into a natural habitat it just goes off it just doesn't work out and i think most of the situations after uh, in like last 3 years you've been have in been the same okay so it's like i already know what's going to happen so i keep myself like okay so this is not it now when you talk about this tani like tell me your top 3 things say today hmm. if you are expecting something out of someone Hmm. Okay, if you want to start dating again, what are the top three things you would want to see in the person? Want and in a person, as in, right? Like the the way they behave or the way they are. Top three things that these are my top three things, and once I tick those, that is when I'm going to date you or be with you. I think I want a person uh, with a mix of. being malevolent and a bit of spiteful um when i say spiteful not very vindictive yes, or vicious yes, or yes, anything yes, like yes. that but just has to have this understanding of life in general right 
I would not want somebody uh, who is who doesn't know the value of time, money, life, and people in general. Uh, also, someone with deep, deep understanding of God and uh, life. Wow! And like, there are so many important things in life other than just working. I think. Um, understanding loyal for sure <laughs> i think hard? a person who's understanding can be loyal but is, it, is uh, it hard to find loyal people these days absolutely <laughs> i agree <laughs> i agree trust even in friendship not even just in relationship yes in friendship also it's insanely hard to find a loyal friendships and i think i'm very blessed with very good sisters in my life oh yeah yeah so like i i really don't feel like making friends outside because you have your own sisters i have my own sisters so they are my mother's best friends sisters wow boyfriends wow. there's that everything a lot of drama happens every day so like there is no and i think that is why for the past 3 years you have not even dated someone because everything is so good with your sisters and yeah yeah also because i've been very in a very self loving journey i guess after my breakup <laughs> because i felt like i wasn't in a very a uh, good stage in my life mentally financially career wise so i was like i was feeling so bad about myself i was like what am i doing with my life oh shit and since last two and a half years of relationship i've not not gained any kind of useful information or has not led me to something very insane in my life as a growth wise you know so it right, has just right, gotten right, me right. down every other year so i felt very bad about it and so i was like i'm just going to give rest of my time for myself make sense to myself to make a better person for my family for my friends and everyone and for me for myself as well because my f- self validation is the most important thing because i'm very self aware person so when it comes to bad things i already blame myself so it's like i want to do good so that i give myself my validation that i'm doing great And this is a slow procedure. It will look great. You are better than last year. You are better than last month. Wow! So I think that is also one of the reasons that I've not been dating uh, since last three years. So those self of me, self affirmation, so the self belief, yeah, helps you to move on. Like absolutely, I'm a big, big time um, person who believes in universe, destiny. manifestation oh, tell me about this then like okay initially you mentioned you really want a guy who is into spirituality and god right yeah. now you say you really like being part of manifestation and everything so tell me something more about this so first starting with god and spirituality do you believe in god and how has it changed because i'm sure you believe in god oh, yeah. but how has god changed and why do you say that i think i come from a family especially my dad he was one of the most self uh, he never thought about himself it was always god for him it wow. was always god for him and whenever he he meets new people used to meet people it was like he always saw them as a beautiful person god beautiful wow. creature that god made and so it it was like everything that came out of his mouth was pure love was pure affection wow was just for a better person and i think that comes from my dad so initially my thing was that i used to sit with my dad do puja and everything oh wow and then it changed because i started working so for me and for my love for god was different now it was like i know i love god and i know it's always in my mind in my heart but you don't have to go to a temple or sit for puja to show yeah, in that yeah exactly so i don't have to go to po- temple or like sit in the mandir and do any kind of ritual but it's just in my head and i know if i'm in a very bad phase in my life it's only one thing that can absolutely solve all my problems is just sit and remember him and just like just like Okay, I'm sorry. I'm. I know. I this might be uh, a situation where it was my fault as well, and um, but I I really don't want to feel in a certain way that I'm feeling right now, and I just just give myself like a day or two, and then everything is fine. 
I feel good. Does it help you? Yeah, absolutely. I don't know medi. I don't do yoga. I don't do meditation. I don't do anything. I'm just. I just sit in like pure darkness and oh like just uh, maybe just go back to sleep or just think about it and like just talk normally to the person. I don't know God. Oh wow! Like this is yeah. a very different side, Chandni. I know. Like, right. and how long have you been doing this? Is it since childhood? Because you've been since with your childhood. dad since childhood. Yes, absolutely. Okay, tell me one moment, yeah. like for us to understand it better. Tell me one moment, or give us an example where you felt very low, mm. and you were not doing well, and you thought there is no solution to something, <coughs> and you sit, you talk to God, and things are better than after then. Uh. this was right after my dad passed away and i was i don't remember how i think 5 to 6 months after that because i was deeply into just deep overthinking a lot of stress uh not getting out of my house my room and just being around my own energy that was very negative and very not very great energy to be honest and that time i realized that there are that i have three sisters and one mother to take care and what am i doing with my life it's just a self awareness question and then there there was this one just normal thought in my head i was like i don't know ab- about me but i would want you i'm talking to god this time so it's like i want you to take care of my family so you can use me for anything like i'll work i'll do everything to to make sure that my family has everything in the life because my father has always taken care of everything, everything. since start so it was like i have i i had to do something because on the other hand my relatives are talking about us getting married me my sisters getting married in, at age of 17 and 18 and 19 which i obviously didn't want it so it was like it was very important for me to take a step ahead towards a life and take care of my family so i was like just just give me a sign if i should do something and if i if i am i am supposed to do something and that's where i got my first brand collab are you serious and i was like oh my god and that was my first proper paycheck like a proper proper money when was this like how this was four almost four years back amazing yeah 3 4 years back yeah so that was the sign from the yeah. god to you that i think it was my dad honestly <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah i think that was the that was a peak point where i was like i can save myself i can actually get myself out of this situation and there's if there's nobody I think there's God with me, and that's the biggest support and the last support I want in my life is just to have God's hand over my uh, head. That's so all. It's been four years, Chandni. Like, do you yeah. still miss your dad? Absolutely, I miss him every day. There's nothing in this life or in this world. There's anything or nothing that can fill that void, and I think it should be like that because some things are better not healed. It just keeps you going. and wanting more out of life like understanding maturity this that do you talk to him yeah a lot what do you, what do you tell him i just i just talk to him normally i i i think most of the conversation of me and my dad looks like um uh, i wish this was the situation i wish that w- that was the situation but then we turn it into a bit of fun <laughs> like i just go i just tell him about my normal day and this and that But yeah, my conversation with him is very, very nice. It's and exactly the same it used to be. And yeah, he's been helping you still with. Absolutely, yes. With everything that you're doing. Everything, absolutely. So when you talk about God, when you talk about that, so do you also like pray now? Because you mentioned in between, you never used to go to temple or like in your house. Is mm-hmm. there a mandir that you sit and <coughs> want to pray to God? Or again, it's the same. thing that no you don't have to go to mandir or look at him it's just that he's in your heart he's in your head i do go to temples but i think it's a very occasionally thing uh, i think um janmashtami ganpati yes 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 and uh, few occasions that i feel like i want to go 
I normally just go to temple and sit for a while and then I come back. And most of the things I do is just I don't know, just remember him normally. So so anyone, a lot of people who are like watching this episode, they do not believe in God. Okay. Maybe mm. it's not about not believe in God, but maybe because they have not experienced something like you have experienced. Correct. Right. So if there's something that you want mm-hmm. to tell them, what would that be? It's fine if you don't believe. I think God will not be offended because you don't believe in his existence. But I think I hope there's something in your life that makes you believe there's God. There's always hope for that. But I think you're good. God will always look after you no matter what. Just be chill in your life and do good and be kind to people around you. That's all. Like okay, uh I we have never spoken so much Chandni like yeah. okay this is the first time I think we are even talking and talking. I'm getting to know you <laughs> so much okay yeah. so correct me if I'm wrong huh. okay just as per your personality hmm. that I have it in my head keeping in mind this conversation we had okay so is it you are very kind to people maybe are you someone who gives a lot hmm. and maybe because you give a lot you get hurt no i don't get hurt but there is are you a giver yeah in a lot of ways yes you are yeah but i i don't expect anything from return i think i i don't want the person to reciprocate the same kind of uh gesture but i think um just to be a nice person like with no spiteful intention is some kind is is people i want to be surrounded with but yeah. again i might be wrong but me i'm personally i think i will give love and a lot of things just because i feel you need love in your life because as i said i don't expect same in return so i don't get that more often so i think it's very important for people to actually know that they need love in their life you know like just that touch of affection and that respect and to know that if you fall there's there's a person you can rely on right um is it only with your close ones or you like in general with, in i'm general. That, I'm, I'm, i'm that with everyone do you think you are liable to give that love to those people because they're not doing well in their life no it's not that it's 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 just out of concern i think mm-hmm. because as i said when my dad passed away there was literally no one to take care it was just like me my own decisions and like if i take one wrong decision my whole family is just like gone in like a second Shit. so it was for me it was like just me my own decisions and as i said i'm not very decisive decision maker, maker. person right so it was a very tough job for me but i think if i had someone that time it would have been way easier for me to handle situations but again as i said i don't regret anything so i i try to be that imaginary person that i wanted in that point of life so i try to be that with people, people nowadays now. so it's like even if they are not doing great i would want them to know that they can just keep going and if there's something that they want me to do it i'll i'll always be there for them so it's that yeah absolutely the, the, there's a uh, on my bio right on my instagram bio huh. and i believe in this so much chani like okay. on my instagram bio there's a line and which is my like again something that i really really believe in something that i really want to do huh. it's like kindness is a flex yeah okay on my instagram yeah. bio so uh-huh. i think what you mentioned i think it is so important to be kind so important, important to give love yeah okay again in my entire journey of relationships friendships and everything there have been moments where i've always been the one who kept giving in yeah all the time yeah. like in every way and to make the person feel good about them and not just with love but supporting them with their career like going extremes to help them yeah okay yeah. motivating them and making sure they are doing, doing it great, yeah. but end of the day something bad happens like mm. they don't reciprocate the same way and then my friends keep telling me okay shanki you should stop being a good person but i think they say they say that and then end of the day again i feel that i think there is a beauty in being a good person 
Absolutely, yes. Like I know there might be moments that you will feel bad, you will fall, but you are just happy. Happy. Yeah. About yeah. giving yeah. as the giver. Yes, absolutely. You, you've been the same as well. Yeah, I think, but uh, I think there's also very important thing keeping in mind is that when you give a lot to a person, it is also backlashes towards you in a very bad way. Is that? you create this person who you wanted to to be with you but there was yes, no one yes, and then you yes. you are there for someone else so it's like you're making them so lazy yeah that the person you're making them so lazy to actually solve their own problems it's like they rely on you on every on other everything. thing yeah for sure right? yes so it's like again there's always the thing that you don't want to make that person very weak because in future there might be something at some situations i'm not available i'm not available or the other person is not available so it's like it's very important for a person to learn how to take decisions how to you know gather themselves and it comes to a lot of bad situations in their life and to also that being too empathetic is bad can be bad for a person so how do you differentiate between being too empathetic and being I, it's very simple i think when i if a person is telling something and i'm being very overly empathetic towards that thing i know that i'm feeling what sh- she's feeling it's very hard to make you understand but it's like you yourself is going through a lot of your own problems and your own troubles and everything you mix up somebody else you manipulate a lot of your own decisions you know and you don't understand that yeah, thing yeah, it's like yeah, a very yeah. very thin line you you do not understand you do that. not understand that yeah. exactly my with point with me yeah. it's like because i've been very if you tell me a story i'll cry right over there it's like i'll start feeling lo- very cry baby and this and that dheere dheere i was i've become a person that i advise i suggest i listen to people and actually understand what's their problem uh I also I now understand where I have to give suggestions, where I have to help someone, help someone, and where I have to just shut up my mouth and just listen to that person. So it also it comes with a lot of time. But a very simple trick is that you don't have to always uh, solve everything. Just understand the situation, act accordingly, and it is solved just like that in a second. So for me it's like it's just that if if a person is telling me something I just listen I you, suggest right right and right, that's right, a full right, stop right, right over there yeah, you don't have to solve that all yeah I I will not solve every other problem that comes in front of me it's that you but know, I try to be that be there for a person that's all but I will not solve anybody's problem you know when we are having this conversation Chani this is like the to be honest this is the first podcast that I'm shooting uh-huh. where it has always been that I want to take this episode this is where I need to go and the flow of the flow. episode and mm. everything this episode has been so intense i think <laughs> i think i'm like just asking you because i'm so much into the conversation and the things that you're saying correct because it is all coming from your heart right and i can feel it like just end to end oh. and i know what you're just trying to say the things and how you feel right now so yeah. i think this conversation has been really beautiful i mean i'm glad and like i'm glad i'm just glad that you've opened up about few things I'm maybe I'm glad you reciprocated the same vibe like you want to listen as i said you can understand if a person wants to listen or not you know yeah it, yeah, yeah. it just it's just the vibe you understand yeah 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 i'm glad you you're actually interested in yeah it is amazing stuff. it is not just for the sake of podcast but a lot of people would not know and especially like when people see someone on the screen like mm. you as a creator <laughs> they always think it's just the happy life they are having it's only glamour Great, on yeah. the other hand yeah on the other side it's only glamour but they do not know the reality of where you've come true. from true and have you started this journey you started you've stopped you've lost people in your life really important people in your life yeah. you kept going you still going yeah and how did love change in your life the things that you've learned so i think it's amazing yeah I know right it's quite fascinating <laughs> it's beautiful <laughs> it's beautiful yeah so with that really really loved the whole conversation i have a small you can say 
a different section altogether. Mm. I'm sure you might not be aware of it. It's called the rapid fire round. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Yes. Okay. Let's go. Yeah. Okay. Let's go. So the rules are simple, Chandni. Mm. Say whatever you have in your head. Okay. okay. You won't get time to think about it. <laughs> say it. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. So okay. I'm not ready actually. <laughs> yeah. Let's so go. So the rapid fire round. The rapid fire round is sponsored by the Backstory Store. Okay. You, we have a small gift for you. And oh, also. that's cute. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Great. We start. Yes. Yeah. Ting ting ting. <laughs> who is the most unexpected celebrity who follows you on Instagram? Uh, uh, one second. <laughs> um, unexpected celebrity. I don't know. I don't know who, who what people follow me. I don't know. Pitabash. Oh yeah, yeah. Peter Bash. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a very uh, unexpected celebrity. I don't know if many people know about him, but he's insanely great actor. I, I know him. Yeah. He worked in um, Monkey Man yes. that recently yes, with yes, Dave yes, Patel, yes, yes. and a lot of great movies like Begum Jaan. And there's the song, there's Cyber One, the very famous Indian song. I love him. Yes. Oh, Peter Bash. Yes. Yeah. Amazing. He follows me. Yes. Okay. Name the most. Famous person on your phone list. The most famous person on your phone list, uh, on your contacts. Pitabash. Oh. Um, <laughs> um. Oh my God, this is so bad. Any creator works. Yeah, like anyone who is like really um, big. Rebel Kid. Okay. Rida. Yes. Uh. Um. 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 I'll just say my best friend Sohini. Oh, yes. amazing. <laughs> Now I already had this in my head when okay. you mentioned Rida and Rebel Kid. Okay. Okay. Tell me two very good things you love about Rebel Kid. Two best things you love about Rebel Kid. Two best things I love about Apoorva is she is very spontaneous. And second is that she will always try to make. Uh, a situation fun even if it's a very um maybe depressing situation she'll always try to l- make people laugh around she's her. a very jolly person she's a very jolly person yeah so i think that's one of the two things that i like about her amazing yeah. if you meet the following people hmm. what will you do how will you react okay first puneet superstar oh my god <laughs> um in- interesting i think uh Puneet superstar. I think I will talk to talk talk to him about his donations and like uh, that he helps people and children out there. I think that's a very different side yes. of a person like him. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes, I so know. So it's it's like I will actually I would love to know his other side, a proper just Puneet. I was not expecting the answer to be honest. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I think I would love to know uh, his. Um, Uh, not weird and absurd side, yes, but yes. a very just normal human being side. Amazing. Yeah. Okay. Next, Priyanka Chopra. I'll go Gaga. I'll go Gaga. I'll be like, oh my god, <laughs> look at you, like a pure <laughs> goddess sitting right in front of me. But I think I will talk to her about um, her journey in Bollywood. Yes. Yeah. I think that has been very f- like beautiful. It's just it's just a lot of ups and downs. Yes. For Priyanka exactly. Chopra. Yeah. Yes, yes. So I think Priyank. Yeah, I'll talk to her about her experience in life. I've seen her a lot of interview inter- interviews, but I think I would love to sit and have, and a, conversation have a conversation with her just like that. Amazing. If yeah. you if you get a chance to do a podcast with her, I'll die. <laughs> <laughs> I'll die. Yes, I'll die. Okay, the next one is my favorite, Shah Rukh Khan. <laughs> um, I think to be just near and around him is enough. It's a, it's a vibe. I think there's an it's aura enough. around him. It's enough. Have you ever seen him like in person or something? Never. But I would love to. I would love to. I would love to. But I've never. I would just love like just sit and look at him. Just look at I him. I know, right? Yeah. Okay. Next one. One relationship advice. Try to date girls if <laughs> you can. <laughs> what? 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 Come again? That's offensive. Uh, Come again? I did not hear that. Try to date girls if you can. What do you mean by that? I mean girls are easier. I mean it's it's less stress, yeah. <laughs> it's less stress. It's less 
chances of you getting hurt i guess are you serious i'm just joking <laughs> <laughs> no i think uh, first no uh, no i think that <laughs> makes so much sense i think it's okay you can say that i think it makes so I'm much sense i'm just sense. kidding i'm just kidding uh, but if you if you're not if you don't want to date a girl then i think one relationship advice is you have heard many times just be you but mm-hmm. i think don't people don't understand this just because you have used a lot of times you don't actually understand the meaning of it but it actually it's just simple as that just be you be you you know just be in your natural habitat with the person you are in relationship that's all one brand that you really want to work with i think i'll go with mercedes oh wow yeah i was expecting maybe netflix or something i think i can get that yeah but mercedes i think it's quite you tricky. can get that as well it's quite tricky i don't know once i start shooting something with mercedes car then you never know i think it, today here sitting here together yeah. will manifest that you are going to get mercedes <laughs> yes let's go let's go let's go <laughs> <laughs> okay one movie that you suggest everyone to watch it at least once in their life holiday okay tell us more yeah it's a very beautiful rom-com um about two strangers they exchange their houses as they want to stay and two different lifestyles you're talking with the christmas one right yes yes i love that <laughs> no, movie i, I love, love that movie <laughs> it's like the it's one of my favorite movies all the, like i'll just watch it every other day i love christmas movies you know i love every movie that is related to christmas like whenever i'm feeling very bored i'll just type christmas movies and, and netflix will just suggest you know, the best I movies i know there is also this one disney movie i i don't remember the name but it's there's this one um, it's only three characters it's 6 minutes ka movie that's all oh i think it's pixar or i don't know and it's, it's on youtube uh, no it's on disney it's on disney not star and um the the story goes like there's this one old man who was a painter and there's his grand ch- uh, child daughter and the daughter like the mother and there's this very beautiful story of just that little girl and the, the grandpa grand- and how they see each other's life wow. and then in last she becomes she paints and everything so it's a very beautiful small it's six thing 6 minutes 6 minutes yes oh amazing one song that you never stop listening to saaso ki mala yeah what is that saaso ki mala can you sing it for us it's no i can't sing it <laughs> <laughs> like um, thoda sa it's um, rahat fateh ali khan ji ka song it's one of the favorite song what is the lyrics all about it's very different it's like it's half the uh, half song is in urdu and a bit of okay. hindi and okay. uh, mixed up okay. but it's a beautiful song i'm sure you've heard it i think i might have i maybe i don't know the name of the name. song oh my god could be possible okay one quality in your future person that you are dating or marrying you would never want i think um making everything about themselves i think that's very easy to say but it's a very deep line yeah. what do you mean yeah one thing from your heartbreak that you've learned being a calm person because i'm i'm a very agitated person you were or ways. you are you i was yes uh like used to take decisions just on based of what i'm feeling at the moment yes. and that was anger so i think i've taken a lot of bad decisions also so i think my last breakup and heartbreak has taught me to be calm and calm. take decisions just think about it and then make decisions right. in life the goa trip with your friend one of your friends that <laughs> went viral okay <gasps> oh my god tell us about that Oh, that's one of the most viral video. Yes. It's insane how people are like going crazy, we're going crazy on that video. <clears throat> But I think that was actually the entire video is true. It was Ab- absolutely true okay. from A to Z. It was absolutely true. So I was supposed to go to Goa alone and then I was like I don't know how to ride a scooty, not a drive okay. Okay. Uh, car. So what am I s- supposed to do four days over there? So then I I uh, called I texted Aryaman so this is the first time I'm initiating a conversation that's his first text in the inbox and I met him only once for half an hour well and in, at an event or something at a event with his sister Devi okay. Devishi and uh, I was like this person seems like a spontaneous person so let me just take a chance and so I texted him and it was like around 4 or 5 in the evening and the next day is my flight 
Ooh. And so I was like, hey, uh, listen, I'm going to Goa. And if you would love to come, please come. I'm alone. So he's like, uh, are you are you pranking? Are you joking? I'm like, no, I'm not joking. He's like, if this is a joke, I'm. it's not funny. I'm like, I'm not joking, but this is serious. Then he's like, are you 100% serious? I'm like, I'm 2000% serious. I'm. This is not a joke. It's not a prank. Then he's like, okay, give me like some time. I'll text you in the night and um, confirm the same. I was like, okay. And then I was like, nahi hoga. I'm like, he'll not come. It's like the next day is the flight yeah, and everything. Yeah. 11 o'clock in the night, he texted me saying that, send me your flight details. <laughs> and then I sent him my flight details. He booked his ticket and the next day we are in Goa. Oh my God. It is one of the best Goa trip of my life. Tell us a little more about this. We, so I, this Goa trip was very unexpected. This is the person I'm meeting for the first time. <coughs> we are going to actually roam around together and like roam here and there, eat food. They're like total two different people. Shit. So it was like a mixture of you want to know each other and like be more good friends because you don't know the other person likes, what they like, what they don't like. But I think with him, it was very simple. It was very easy. It was just like we already know each other each since other. a year or like we are already very good friends. So it was very fun. I think that was the first Goa trip or any trip in my life that I've completed under 10K. What are you saying? Yeah, that insane, isn't it? I'm a person who will spend entire bank account if I'm going somewhere. But that trip was Four under days, 10K. 10K. That is amazing. I know, right? It was insane. And when we were sitting, uh, when we landed Bombay, I was like, I don't think so. We have done so many things. And then it was like, no, we did everything. We went to South. We explored multiple islands. Then we went, we had so much food, beer, traveling here and there, singing Taylor Swift songs in rain yeah. and everything. We did everything, literally everything, under 10K, which is insane to me. Oh my God. And, and I think it's one of the best trips. I think that video really <coughs> went viral and I yeah, think yeah, yeah. insane. And also he made that video out of nowhere. So it was like... Was it was, like, the video was not planned basically <coughs> once, he, once yeah, you guys yeah. got so back. So I was and like, I asked him, I was like, what kind of content are you planning? <clears throat> so he's like, I'm not planning any content. I'm just coming there to chill. It's like, okay. He just kept taking uh, shots everywhere normally. And yeah, then yeah. he just came up with this idea. Amazing. And then he posted that video. Crazy. I know, right? <laughs> okay. We end up with this last question. Okay. Okay. Would you, if your ex comes back to you, would you mm. ever go back to him Never. if he apologizes? Never. Yeah? Never. 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 And why is that? As Priyanka Chopra said that I don't read my books backwards. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, I think, uh, no, I will never. <clears throat> I think that's a good line to end this. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I have a small <laughs> gift for you. So this is a small gift for you. Here you go. And there's a small notebook inside as well. <gasps> this is, notebook? Yeah, it's like a notepad. And this is from... Books and coffee attacked. So this much, is, so much of chandni. This is from my store, the Aww, backstory store. That and is I so hope cute. you like it. Oh, it's adorable. Thank you so I hope much. You like it. I will return a favor with the book. <laughs> Do you read books? I love I love reading. If you Are go you to my room, seriously? if you go to my room, yeah. I have like three shelves full of books. Oh my god, that's insane. And I'm like, I'm someone, to be very honest. I don't get time to read a lot of books, huh. but I get a lot of time to purchase a lot of books. I get that. <laughs> I understand that. What is your favorite book? So I think I recently learned uh, Tuesdays, with, Tuesdays with Maury. Okay. And I think that has been really, like, I've had better books, to be very honest. Hmm. But why I love Tuesdays with Maury is because it has taught me a lot about life, how to be really calm in situations where you are feeling out of your place. Makes sense. And especially... In my journey right now, mm. when things are just getting difficult and exciting and fun, I think it is very important to stay grounded no matter whatever you are doing, no matter what heights you are on. You just have to stay grounded, be kind to people and yeah. never forget to enjoy life. Absolutely. I love that book. Nice. I love it. Nice. What's your nice. favorite book? Oh, that's a tricky one. <clears throat> a House Without Windows. Is one of my favorite. Oh my books. god, I've I've heard very good reviews it's about. Amazing! I it took me like a three to four months to complete it, 
because it's a huge book okay it's a very massive book but i think it it also took me so much time to get out of that book i i it was like after reading that book i couldn't read any other things because everything was just in my head still trying to figure out a lot of things right after reading that book but it's one of my favorite book it's just amazing i've, I've heard really good reviews about that book and i know i know it's amazing you should try it out i will i yeah. think Now you've suggested me. I like. I really want to try. It. I think I'll <laughs> just go and buy it today. It's a, you. I'll give it to you. I have. Don't. It's a very expensive book, by the way. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Please, I think I will. I'll give it to you. Yeah. I really want to read that one. Perfect. Perfect. So before we end this, Chandni. Yeah. Okay. One message to everyone who is watching this podcast and who is in a situation they are maybe low in life. They are not doing well in life, mm. or there's something really major happening in their life. so one thing to tell them that things are going to be better one message to them it's the situation is just for now it's not going to stay forever so you can take your decisions with a lot of calmness you have a lot of time in your life nothing is happening so just chill take your decisions and i'm sure this phase is just for a short period of time next day you'll be sitting in a cafe yeah. reading books you never know yeah. just chill <laughs> yeah okay guys yes. so i think that's the best advice we can get from chandni and with this we end this episode here thank you so much chandni for coming here thank lighting this space up thank you so much for having up. me more than these lights <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank that's you really so sweet. much Welcome. and really nice having you here and talking to you and to be very honest the conversations are really deep and really meaningful thank so you. thank you so much for teaching me a lot of things today i'm taking a lot from this conversation I'm today i'm glad so I'm glad. thank you so much thank you see you guys bye bye i hope you enjoyed this episode and this conversation with chandni if you have any questions any doubts or anything that you want to know in particular do not forget to comment below so that we together can reply to all your comments with that don't forget to subscribe to this channel and like and share this video with your friends and family and also follow us on instagram by the name the back story Until then I'll see you in the next episode